Hello and welcome to the PHP beginner course. So today in this session, we're going to configure a PHP development environment. So we're going to install XAMPP. That's going to have all the software that we need to get started with PHP. And then we're going to familiarize ourselves with our new development environment and then build our first PHP page. So let's just take a few minutes to remind ourselves that PHP is a server side language which is different from, for example, HTML or JavaScript, a front-end language predominantly. So PHP is going to handle all the back-end dynamics, calculations and processing that's needed to get people to log in, uh, to save data, to update files, for example, to create new blog entries and so on. So all the kind of tools, all the functions that are needed in order to perform those type of actions are all going to be handled by PHP, the server side language. So also what's important to understand is that PHP is a, an interpreted language, which needs an interpreter. So for example, HTML, um, the code is sent to your browser and your browser um, then reads and then displays information on the page, whereas, pro whereas PHP needs to be interpreted. So PHP is being a programming language and um, will have constructs and maybe calculations and that will all need to be um, processed by the interpreter. So we put PHP code into the interpreter and the interpreter will deal with and manage all those instructions that we give it and then what the output will be whatever we've asked the interpreter for. So for example, if we were to make a calculation, one plus one, and then send that into the interpreter. The interpreter is going to interpret the PHP, um, that piece of code, and output number two, for example. So that's kind of the flavor of what the interpreter is going to do on a, a, very, a very loose uh, description there of the interpreter. So because of this, we are going to need to install the PHP interpreter on our development server or our development machine. And then we're going to need to deal with HTTP requests and responses. Because PHP is a back-end language, um, typically from the browser, we send a request for a page and that then page needs to be processed and so on. So we can't run PHP from the browser like we can with HTML and JavaScript, for example. Um, we're going to need to send it to a server, the PHP. So therefore, we're going to need to deal with HTTP requests and responses and so on. So what we're going to need to do is install the PHP module, install a web server, be that Apache or other varieties. And then finally, we are going to need to um, store data. So we're going to need a database or access to a database. So we need to install that too. Okay, so luckily... There is a piece of software called XAMPP, which has everything that we need, the web server, a database, and the PHP interpreter. Now, there are other pieces of software, something called EasyPHP, for example, um, or you could try WAMP server, or the uh, WAMP alternatives, MAMP and LAMP, if you're using Mac or Linux. So this software, like I said, is going to have all the software all built into one, so we can start building with PHP. So go ahead and access AMP, XAMP, sorry, and then go on the downloads. So I'm just downloading the latest version here. You can see that there's versions for Linux and OS X. So this is 7.4.4. So we just need to download that. Okay, so once you finish downloading, you start installing. Uh, this is a really simple package to install. Slightly, you're going to see this message here. Just press OK and then press Next. Now, what we're going to need here is my SQL, which is going to be the database. We're not going to need FTP server or the mail server or Tomcat, okay, because we're using Apache, which is our web server. And then we were not going to need Perl um, language. And we're not going to need fake or the Webalizer. We're just going to need PHP my admin, which is going to be the graphical user interface that's going to allow us to um, manage our databases. So that's what you need to install. Press next. And then install it to the C drive if you're using Windows. And next, and then just wait for it to install. Okay, so once it's finished installing the Windows Defender firewall, 
might block some of the features. So we allow access to the Apache server. That isn't a problem. Okay, so once you get to the end, it will ask you if you want to start the control panel now. I'm going to deselect that just so that I can show you how to start the control panel. And then I press finish. Okay, so now it's installed. Uh, so if you remember, if I go into my file explorer, um, if you remember, it was installed on the C drive and then in the folder XAMP. So that's where it's going to be installed. So it's important to remember that. And now if we go inside of this folder, you're going to see lots of files here and folders. So all you're interested in here really is looking at the HTD docs folder. So this folder right here. So HTD docs, that's really the only folder that you need to know about to start developing because that's where you're going to have all the files or store all your web files. So when you open the browser and go to your server, uh, and want, you want to open the website, this is where the website files are going to be stored. Okay, so first of all, we need to start the server. Not too sure why I went into that view. Um, let's go back to list. So what you'll want to do to start this is you'll want to select the XAMP start or stop. Now, if you don't want the graphical user interface, that's definitely the two options that you want to select. Now, um, if you want to use the control panel, then you're going to need to select uh, the option XAM control. So that's going to open up the control panel. There we go. And then from here, we can start and stop all the services that we need. So in order for us to run our server, we're going to need to start Apache. So I press start and it goes yellow, then green. So green indicates that the service is running OK. And then I need to start the database too. So that's going to happen. The Defender firewall is going to pop up. That's OK. And now our server is running. So we can test to see if it's running by going into the browser. So this is important again to remember. Now, in order for us to access our server or any server in the world, in the internet, normally we type in a domain name. So this is how we access files on a server. So in order for us to access our files on our server, we've just started, we're going to need to type in a few numbers. So we can type in the loopback address here. And then you can see now our server is working okay. So these files here represent what's in our, in our htdocs folder. So if I go back to the htdocs folder, these files here represent the web page that we're looking at here. So we can also type in local host. Um, that again just references the IP address I just typed in, the 127001, a loopback address. So the loopback address just represents an IP address that's assigned to your computer. Um, so basically we're just sending a message to your computer which has the server on it. Whereas if we went to Google for example, the IP address that we type in, um, the URL sorry, that we type in Google, well that gets translated to an IP address. That IP address then is used to find the Google server somewhere on the internet and then we can access the web page. So here we type in 127001 which is our loopback address. So the address that's assigned to the computer here. Um, and we send the HTTP message and um, when we type in this URL we send a HTTP message to our server which is the Apache server that's currently turned on. So um, we're sending a message to our server um, uh, and that can be 127001 or localhost and that's just asking for the files. So let's just uh, see this in action. So if you go back to your C drive and then XAMP, inside of here we've got the htdocs folder. So remember I said that's where all the files are stored. So if I delete all of those and now just refresh my server, so this is the root directory, so just slash, um, you can see that that doesn't do anything now. So we're just seeing a, a um, an index of that folder. So we can prove to see if that is the case because I can just add a new text document and we should see that. There we go. So hopefully now you get the general idea of what's happening here. We're running our server. We're typing in a, a address, which is the address of our computer. That message is being sent to our server, Apache. And Apache is saying, okay, I've got that request. 
I need to now deal with it. And it does that by finding the home directory, which is this folder here, and then serving whatever pages are in this folder here. So if we were to now open this with um, a notepad and then file save as, and here we're going to type in index.php. Now we need to change the file type to all files. So the file saves as a .php and not .text. And then I press save and I close that. And notice I've got two files here. And originally the server was serving this page here or showing me this page, but now I've got something called index and I refresh. You can see it disappears because the server by default, the software Apache, looks for a file called index to serve first. So the question if you had, well, how does the server know which page to load first? Well, it's because it's coded into the program, Apache, or whatever server the website is running, to run the index page first. So um, that proves that that is true. So we'll get rid of the text file. And now we go back to the index page and we'll just open that, uh, open with, and then we'll open that up with Notepad. Here we are. And now we're just going to build our first PHP page. So the first thing you need to know about PHP is that if we want to write anything in PHP, we need to use the delimiters. So this basically tells the interpreter, the PHP terp interpreter, that the next thing you're going to see is some PHP language. So if I type in the angle bracket and then question mark PHP and then close question mark angle bracket, I'm telling the interpreter that all the code that's inside of here is PHP. So you'll need to do something with it. You'll need to process it. Whereas something else in the page might be some HTML. So just because we're using a .php page file extension, we can still use HTML also. So if I made a P tag and as added some text here, we can still run HTML within the PHP page if we want to. That's just a P tag. Um, so let's just add some PHP. So we're going to use the command echo. So echo is basically the print to screen command. So I can echo something. Um, I need to use the double um, or the single quotes. Either way, it doesn't matter at this point. And then I type in the word, hello, world. There we go. So now what should happen if I press save on the screen, the interpreter should read this and then put this on a file and then send that file back to our browser. Our browser reads this and then puts it onto the page. So we'll just close that and then we'll close that and refresh. And there we go. So there we've made our first PHP page. So if we were to just right click, this is in Chrome and view the source, you can see that all we have is hello world. So we don't see all the PHP delimiters um, or anything else there. Uh, we only see what is outputted. So the PHP interpreter takes that PHP and outputs something. So therefore in the browser, we don't see all the PHP code like we do if we're typing HTML, for example. So the last thing, if you need to find out, for example, what version or how your environment is set up, what we can do if I just go back into my server, so uh, C drive, XAMP, and then the HT docs. If I just edit this file and in the PHP delimiter area here, if I just type in PHP info, this is a function. Now I run that, you can see that what's being returned, sorry, is um, all the information about this version of PHP. We're running 7.4.4. Um, it tells you about the Windows machine that I'm running. Um, there's lots of different information here where advanced users could understand. Um, for example, uh, what modules PHP is running. Um, it tells me about the Apache server environment. So it tells me about all the different details there. So this is a comprehensive overview of um, the environment, the working environment that I'm currently working in. 
Okay, so there we go. We configured our PHP development environment. So we installed XAMPP. Um, obviously, there was different varieties that we could have installed. We familiarized ourselves with start an XAMPP. And then, of course, we can stop XAMPP in the same way. And then we looked at the htdocs folder, which is our folder where we store all of our web pages. And then we built our first PHP page. So we learned a few things. One, we learned about the PHP delimiters, the fact that we have to type PHP within the delimiters. And then secondly, we looked at echo, which is the command we use to print out things onto the page, text onto the page, strings onto the page or variables. And thirdly, we used the PHP info, which provided us some information about our environment 